Rightio, welcome to another episode. So, a bit of a popular topic, I think, this one, the uh, charge base station and tool storage for all the cordless tools. So, recently I purchased all the Milwaukee tools. Um, if you missed that episode, go back, have a look through the uh, playlist that I've got sorted. I'll see if I can link it in the description below. But the idea of this episode is we give all these a new home up on the wall, on the shelf, however it is, a bit on this side, a bit on that side, haven't quite decided yet. But that's the plan for this episode, so let's get stuck into it. This is Hack TV, where we have a crack at building whatever, however. Let's get into it. Right, so I'll uh, drop in a bit of footage of the design that I've done on SketchUp and I'll just go through exactly what I've sort of designed and how I want to utilise this space. Really trying to use as much of the space as I can and I'm trying to incorporate all the tools that I've already bought plus some that I'm thinking of maybe getting. So I want to make sure I've got a little bit of space left over to accommodate for any sort of future tools and batteries and whatnot. So I'll drop that in now. Alrighty, so let's have a quick run through of uh, what I've sort of designed here. So I've just quickly modelled in the basic sort of shell of the shelving unit and everything like that. So I'll start on the left side. We've got the drill storage underneath so I'll have a couple of little pigeonholes for those and they run the full length of the shelf so I'm just going to see if I can get away with chucking in two drills back to back um, so I can put my old drills in behind there until I get rid of them and yeah so that's the idea there and then to the right I got the batteries mounted underneath the shelf where I'll use those battery mounts so I should be able to get fair few under there but if I get four that's all I really need under there and then on the back I've got space for the charger and they'll plug straight into the power point there and I've also got space on this wall next to it for another charger if I do decide that I want the single charger with the M12 charger on top of that so I'll work that out as, I, as I'm using the shed and I can easily just mount that later. And then moving up top, I've got the circular saw storage. So this obviously isn't the actual circular saw. I've just used these random sort of objects that I've found just as placeholders in here, just so I know sort of what I'm dealing with. But anyway, so the circular saw, I'm allowing for that guide that comes with it to actually fit on the saw when I store it away. Um, I do realize I lose a bit of space because of that, so we'll see how we go with that. But that's the idea, so I've allowed for that. And that sits on a little um, ramped shelf with like a block just to stop it from falling. So that'll have a hole cut out in it where the saw blade goes into. Next to that, I've got the reciprocating saw. Uh, that'll have shelf to itself, I guess. And then next to that, I've got the trimmer and I'll probably put the little trim bits behind that and then on, on top of that I've got the multi-tool next to it on this side I've got the plunge base and I'll put all the guides and everything inside that shelf there and on top of that I've got all the multi-tool attachments and everything there so up the top I'm actually going to leave this vacant for future tools so depending on what I end up getting we'll Obviously, I'll look into what I end up doing up there. So, just going to leave that vacant for now. So, whatever I end up getting, I'll sort out later. The little compact blower will go up here. I'll work out some sort of bracket or mount for that. And I'll try and make sure I can incorporate the battery to sit up there as well if I do want to put it away with the battery. So, now we go to the right side. So, if you haven't already worked out, my shed is kind of set up with the left side is dedicated to sort of timber work sort of stuff and the right side of is more the mechanical sort of side of things so 
that's how I'm sort of segregating the tools. So this side will have things like the grinder and the wheels and stuff I'll mount on the wall. I'll put another charger on this side and some more battery mounts under the shelf there. And I'll have some places for some more drills. So these will be more like the wrench drills and things like that. And up the top, I've currently got my chainsaw and everything up here, but that'll eventually go in the garden shed. So this, these two shelves up here will just be spaces left over for any future tools and little bits and pieces that I end up putting in for here that I haven't really purchased yet or know what that is. So I've just kind of just mocked something up there just as a placeholder. And then eventually when I get the leaf, big leaf blower, I'll chuck that in on the wall, on the little side of the shelf there. So yeah, that's a bit of a rundown of what I'm thinking. So we'll see how much of this actually comes through when I go to build it, but that's the plan. So see how we go. So in the design where I've got the drill storage in those like, I guess you call them like slotted pigeon holes, I guess. I'm gonna have raw edges with drills constantly kind of rubbing on them a lot. So I didn't want to make those out of the same stuff that I made the shelves and the line the walls with. So I opted for a ply. So I've picked up a bit of this, it's actually form ply. It's perfectly flat and straight. It does have this finish on it, which I don't think is a bad thing because it means, you know, things can slide on it a lot easier. But if I do find that it's not really working for me and I don't like it, I can easily just sand it off. So that's why I've gone with the ply because I'm going to have those edges exposed and I want to actually use the router to have put a bit of a, a round like corner on it to get rid of the sharp edge. So I feel like the yellow tongue would deteriorate over time. So that's kind of my thoughts behind why I've gone the ply. So let's start building the pigeonhole storage first. Let's get into it. Right, yeah, so what I've done here is just built the, just the, this is the top section that gets screwed to the underside of the shelf. And then I have the dividers, so they'll slide in in there. So I'm just gonna fix these just with screws, no glue or anything, because I've got a feeling I might have to take these off again when I put the bottom pieces in that actually hold the drills in. So get this together and then we'll uh, nut out the rails. Right, yeah. So I changed my mind about those rails. I, after I screwed in this one piece, I realised it's going to be too difficult to try and keep this square. I'd probably have to put like a piece at the back or something. But I feel like if I had a full piece on the bottom and then I just cut the slots out and didn't go all the way to the end, then that would actually be a bit stronger for one. And I'd be able to keep all these rails square because I'll have something else to screw to and keeping them in line. So that's how I'm gonna go about doing that. So I can actually glue these down, I'll screw them on, and then I'll get one full piece for the bottom and I'll cut the slots out. Easy done. Right, yeah, so when I want the cuts to be perfect, I opt for the miter saw or something. I can't get the full cut because it's 350mm deep. So what I do is I'll just cut as far as I can in on one side, make sure I've clamped it all up, and then I'll flip it, put the blade into the same cut line. Obviously make sure it's all clamped up again, and then continue to cut. So that's I've found that to be the best way to get 
boards that are, I probably wouldn't go any bigger than this, it's probably a bit awkward to handle, but that's how I get the cuts done when they're um, a bit wider. So now that I've built the overall unit, I need a mark out for where the drills actually go in. So I need to work out what perfect size works to actually hold the drills. I want to do, be able to hold a lot of different types of drills, like so I don't have to actually pick a specific hole for each drill. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to get a couple of offcuts and clamp them to the table and just check all the drills actually sit in there nicely and then that'll give me the gap that I have for all of them and I'll mark that out on here and we'll be able to cut it out from the piece. So let's have a, have a crack. So it turns out the sweet spot is 46 mil. So if anyone's doing this, you want a 46 mil gap and then I've got like a Jeez, I don't know, how would I measure the what radius that is? It's like a three mil radius on the edge and it works out perfect for every drill that I've got here. That's from the Panasonic to the Milwaukee 12 volt and all the M18 stuff, so ripper. Alrighty, so might need some new hole saws because they're blunt, but done the job. So now I'm going to unscrew this, get her over to the miter saw, cut these slots in, and we're good to go. There you go, job done. So what I'll do now is I'll just clean up all these edges where I couldn't get the blade all the way up to. And then I'll run the router around all that, get the edge that I want, we can screw her back on, and she's ready to roll. All good, so now that's all cleaned up can actually use the router on it. So it's important to have the edges all nice and smooth or else the router is pretty much just gonna copy whatever the little bearing feels. So if there's any notches or any little grooves in it, you're gonna see it in your finished product. So had to sand that, filed off the little edges that the uh, blade couldn't get to. And now time to finally use this little router. Let's see how good she is. Let's hope I don't stuff it up. Beauty, done that edge. It's actually worked out bloody good. That little, little trim is a beast. So what I'm gonna do now is mark out where all the dividers are and I'm actually gonna run cut 45 degrees back so I don't have a square edge to butt straight into so I'll have a bit of a chamfered edge like I showed in that little drawing that I've done on the computer so I'm going to mark those out, cut those, see if I can get away with it on the miter saw or else I might have to do it, might end up just using maybe the multi-tool or something like that but mark those out and then I'll be able to screw it back on. If you're thinking he's just trying to find an excuse to use every bloody tool that he's got, you'd probably be right. Just keen to use this thing. And I don't think I would have been able to get that cut on the miter saw. It was just gonna hit the other side of the piece. So I think this is probably my best bet anyway. Let's do it.
Let's chuck this bad boy up. Whoa. Fits. Must have measured it or something. Let's give her a test. Woo! Ripper. Right, let's see how many we can actually get in here. Well, there you go. So I can get two impacts, two drills, and the 12 volt impact, and obviously the wrench as well. So last night we finished off the drill storage. Next we're going to tackle the dividers for all the other tools and then we'll get into that little angled seat I've got for the circular saw so let's get stuck into that. So I originally designed the storage for the circular saw to incorporate the guide but using this now I realize this thing is actually not even that good. It always goes off square. I think it's more just for rough sort of cuts here and there but I can't work out a way to make it accurate. But instead of having it actually mounted on the saw to store, it means that I'm going to need, obviously I lose a lot more space in the shelf because I have to allow for that piece. So what I'm going to do is make it, make it so it stores the saw in there like that. And then this, I'll put like a little something in there just to hold that separate so I can take this out on its own and leave that in there as well. If I just do decide that I want to use it then it's there for me to use so that lets me bring everything a lot closer this way and it might end up giving me an extra bay so I'll see, I'll work out the measurements what it needs to be and I'll see what it ends up leaving me with so work this out and then we'll get, get into it. Alrighty, -o, time to work out how I'm going to make this little seat for it. So I've got to work out this angle. Got my little trusty angle finder. Slot this in here. Alrighty, so what I've done here is I've got the base plate for where the circuit saw is going to sit. I've routed out the notch for where the actual saw blade falls into. So this will help locate the saw when it's sitting on the mount. So essentially that just goes in there like that. And I've also just put that rounded edge with the router on there as well. So that's uh, worked out quite well and yeah the little uh, router's coming in handy so let's keep going. So there's the basis of the uh, circular saw storage. The idea is just pretty much line up the blade, drop it in, done. And now that I've got that sorted out, I'll work out the divider in between, chuck her up on the shelf, and then we'll work out the next part of the storage unit. So let's keep going. worked out that I could actually line up the dividers of the end drill storage um, unit so I can store the uh, reciprocating saw and the multi-tool underneath it and it fits out
exactly where that lines up. So we'll line up on the end of the drill storage and then I've just got a little shelf divider that'll slot in there so I can put the reciprocating saw on top and the multi tool underneath. Put all this together, I'll have to pop off the drill storage unit just so I can screw the dividers in from underneath and just so they're not flopping around everywhere. And we're good to go, so happy days. Rightio, so before I screw it back on, I'm just gonna hit it with a bit of a, a bit of a paint just so the outside is all one colour and I'm just gonna leave all the edges just the raw timber finish. So hit it with a bit of paint, screw it back on, we're good to go. Right, so while I was waiting for the paint to dry on the drill storage thing. I just sort of was marking around with a few offcuts on how I'm actually going to sort out the rest of it now that we've changed the design a bit. So this is kind of what I've come up with. Obviously we've got the circular saw, then the reciprocating saw, multi-tool. Now I'm going to have the trim router and the plunge base in front and behind each other. So that'll go in there and then underneath I'll have the guide and everything for the trim router and the, all the dust extraction stuff all that underneath it and then on this side I'll have things like the router bits and I've got that flood lamp that I'll put back there and I've also got the blades and attachments for the multi-tool that will go underneath so I'll sort all that out properly with the right dimensions and that's pretty much how I reckon I'll finalise this area. Right, eh? So, we're all loaded up. So what I've done, I actually put some of that um, that oil finish like I've done on the trims of all the mezzanine and stuff, just to finish it off and um, seal it a bit. So now that I've got all that up there, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna cut this wall track back because it's a bit useless sitting there anyway. So I'll cut that back. I'll mount the chargers to the wall and we'll go ahead and start putting in the battery mounts as well. So let's get into it. So all I've done here is measured out center line and I wanted to make sure that the top of the chargers are all flush with the top of the power points. So I just rigged up a uh, just a test board with the measurements and then I just copied the measurements across onto there. They go into these little notches on the back of the back of the charger and easy as that really. So that'll just go on there like that. Bang, done. So I just noticed that there's these channels for the lead to run through, so I'm just gonna run them through there and then that'll run up to the power point and then I'll cable tie the rest of the 
lead with some cable ties. So that'll run up there like that. So now I've got to work out these battery mounts. I want to make sure I can at least fit the six amp hour batteries back to back. So I've already worked out the height works out. I'll have a battery above another six amp hour battery charging that I can still get the battery in and out charging on the charger. So now I've just got to work out the alignment on the actual underside of the shelf, screw up the mounts, and that's it, Bob's your uncle. Rightio, so they're all mounted and pretty easily accessible. Next, I want to mount the little compact blower. So I'm thinking of putting it up here and I've got just the bracket for it. it should be pretty easy, so I'll do that. And yeah, then I'll give you a bit of a rundown on how all this is gone and we'll keep going. Righty -o. so that's where I'll leave it for this episode. Got the other side to do still, but I think I'll leave that for the next one. Got the most of the stuff up that I wanted to get up. Got the batteries up, chargers on, the drills are in. So this was the main thing I wanted to really do. And majority of the other tools that I've got are all mounted up now. So happy with how all that's turned out. Got a few other little bits and pieces that I still want to work out how to, how to mount and store and I'll work that out in the next stage. So let's just have a look at what, what I've done so far and um, yeah, just go through it up close. So first and foremost, the drill storage just worked out better than I thought it was gonna work out actually. Didn't think I was gonna be, to, gonna be able to store this many drills, like all the old drills behind it. So I've got my old Panasonic's behind there and I've just worked out whichever drill works out better in front of it just so they all fit in. So moving over, I've got a couple of um, bits that I use in the uh, impact drill a lot. So I've got a few different sizes there, just ready to go. And then we've got the battery storage. So all the batteries actually click into these mounts. So the front ones, it's fine. It's easy to, easy to grab, but if I want to get to the one at the back, it's a little bit trickier, but it's, it's not like, it's not difficult, but I feel like if, if it didn't have that click in it, uh, it'd be a lot easier to pull in and out when I've got a batch in front of it. But, you know, it's not the end of the world if I want to pull this one out, just to pull that one out. So, um, that's worked out well. Got the charger mounted on the wall and I can still pull the battery in and out when I've got the other batteries mounted underneath the shelf, which is good. So moving along here, I've just got the drill bits mounted on the wall. So they're off the bench and easy to get to. So happy with that. And then we've got a little compact blower up on the wall there on that little bracket. And that also can go up there with the battery as well. So the five or the six amp hour battery fits up there when it's mounted on the wall. So if I did want to leave the battery on it while it's up there, I can. Next, I've got the circular saw. So that just locks into that little notch that we've cut out of the base. And also this is removable. So if I find that this is either wearing out or I get a different um, circular saw for whatever reason, I can alter this to, to suit. And also because it's got the hole in there, dust and stuff sitting in there just makes it easier to clean. 
so that can just slide straight in there. And then moving over, I've got the multi-tool storage in here, and then on top of that, I have the reciprocating saw. So both of those fit in there quite nicely. I can actually put them in this way with a battery on the back. The battery just sticks out, so it does actually fit in there with the battery, but just sticks out a bit. So I don't mind for these type of tools to not store it with the battery or the blades. So I'm gonna have to work out something a little different to how I'm gonna store the blades, but for now I've just sitting them in the shelf with it. So I'll just put that in there. And then moving over here, I've got the router, the little trimmer. So I've got the trimmer itself, plus all the bits that go on it. And I've also got the plunge base. So that all fits in there nicely. And then underneath that, I've got all the guides and everything for the trimmer and also the guide for the circular saw. So that worked out well that I could throw all that sort of stuff under there. Now moving across here, this is kind of just more of a general storage pigeonholes. So I've got the box at the back for all the bits for the multi-tool. So that fits in there nicely. And then I just put my earmuffs and safety glasses in there. So I find I always want those easily accessible. Then up here, I've got the little flood lamp. And then behind there, I've just got all the old chargers. So I've got the original M12 Milwaukee charger and the Panasonic charger back there as well. So they're all stored. And that's pretty much it, apart from the hammer storage that I threw on and the tool bag. That's all that done. So hope you enjoyed, enjoyed that episode. And uh, if you haven't already, remember to smash that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next episode where we do the other side. So yeah, cheers for watching. See you on the next one.